So I'm sure you're all aware of the escalating conflict in the Middle East right now between Israel and Palestine, but I have to admit, I'm finding the discourse surrounding this topic at the moment highly just bizarre. Because the narrative surrounding the state of Israel, especially recently, is completely in flux. You will not find definitive answers in the mainstream coming from the media and also just the journalists and politicians on both sides. They are not being honest about the situation between Palestine and Israel. And there's only so much I can even get into on this platform that is YouTube, right? But you know what? I'm gonna try my best because when a website like IGN have been nothing but cancerous in terms of gaming culture, they've been 100% on the side of the anti-gamer gators, they have actually weighed in on the Israeli-Palestine conflict. And you think, wow, that's a bit of a hot potato, IGN. You know, are you sure that you really want to even be taking a side in this extremely controversial debate to the point where they actually have a Palestinian flag next to their logo on their front page right now. And it's causing a huge amount of butthurt within the journo community. The egghead journalists are kind of having a bit of a meltdown right now because of Israel. So let's just, let's break it down. Let's see really if we can figure out what the fuck is happening here because really it's not just IGN. I feel like the left at the moment and the far left, they seem to be struggling with kind of a cohesive narrative surrounding Israel. I mean, a lot of them, being Marxists, being intersectionalists, they see the Israeli state as a, a white supremacist state inflicting tyranny upon the Palestinian people. So by the rules of their own ideology, Israel should be opposed. And it's really, it's amazing how mainstream the anti-Israel narrative has become. To the point where this industry shill website like IGN, just infested with leftist journalists, these are the people who are confident in their public opposition of Israel. Because it wasn't long ago where the criticism of Israel would have you labeled as an anti-Semite. I mean, the media would go for you. Because, you know, the accusation of anti-Semitism, that, that's usually reserved for like an alt-right troll. But, you know, it, it, where I'm from in the UK, a lot of the far left here are staunchly anti-Israel. And it goes all the way up to the top. I mean, you have you know, Jeremy Corbyn of the Labour Party, you know, hard left, momentum character, right? Now, he has been criticized for anti-Semitism for years by the British media. And where does that stem from? Well, that comes from his support of the Palestinian people. And why does he support Palestine? Well, he's a hardcore socialist who sees the situation as just a clear example of tyranny and oppression of the Palestinian people by the state of Israel. And this is a problem for the left because their entire shtick is based on this guilt narrative of, well, you know, you have the white man holding down people of color and bio PC and BAME and whatever other weird Orwellian kind of abbreviation you want to use. Israel are 100% guilty by the left's own standards of this intersectional dialectic to the point where calling the Israeli state a regime, you know, I mean, that's become normalized by a lot of people on the left. In fact, Twitter now is becoming more and more anti-Israel, despite many, perhaps, journalists and politicians who have, say, I don't know, dual citizenship with Israel. They are not happy with the criticism that they're receiving right now from supposedly their own side, okay? Because, hey, it's fine to criticize the West, it's fine to criticize America, it's fine to criticize Britain, it's fine to criticize the people of the West and their traditions and their culture, but don't you fucking dare criticize Israel. That is the message that kind of is being disseminated throughout the left right now and it's not being received particularly well. And why is that? Well, I think there is one key element here that is causing this narrative dissonance on the left, and it's the obfuscation of the true nature of Israel, right? Because it's a topic that doesn't come up much. It's danced around by politicians. Joe Biden himself is pro-Israel, even if perhaps it's not a full-throated endorsement. Like, I guess Trump would have fucking kissed Netanyahu's ass right now, but much to the chagrin of the former Bernie bros of the Democratic Party, Biden says Israel has a right to defend itself. Next question.
Of course, just like every American politician, both on the left and the right, over the past God knows how many years, probably stretching all the way back to JFK, they've all been pro-Israel. Even Biden, who is supposed to be this progressive breath of fresh air after four years of tyranny, right? You know, hey, he is no different. At the end of the day, he's another Washington shill with his pockets bulging with APAC lobbyist money that comes directly from these Zionist interest groups, okay? Because Israel, as a state, has a huge vested interest in receiving aid and other benefits and funding and protection from the U.S. government, and by proxy, the U.S. military. There is a clear disconnect between the mainstream left and the far left on the topic of Israel. I think we can all agree on that. It's that there are multiple narratives that are coexisting and they prevent anyone from getting a clear grip on what the fuck is going on. And that is what's causing this infighting. There is this idea floating around that the Jewish people are white because they have white skin. Okay, let's accept that as true. Well, if that's true, if, if the Jewish people are white, then what the fuck, Israel? Then in, that makes the left massive hypocrites. It makes Joe Biden a retard. Because, I mean, why is it so hard for the left you know, to agree upon Israel being this white supremacist, uh, you know, fascist state, right? But if that was the case, if there was a consensus on this, then there wouldn't be such a debate happening right now. So what's the flip side? On the flip side, there's this other narrative floating around, which is that the Jewish people are an independent ethnic peoples and that they are under attack from both Palestine and the Islamic world in general because of prejudice and anti-Semitism. And they're, they are the ones being persecuted, right? And Israel is this poor little defenseless state in the middle of the, the, the desert, desperate to try and survive. And we as Americans and as Westerners, our support of Israel is a no-brainer because if you don't do that, then, then you're supporting terrorism, okay? So, are there people on the left currently that subscribe to narrative B, the Israeli persecution narrative? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, that is the mainstream opinion on Israel, not only by the neolibs like Joe Biden, but also the neocons on the right. It's one of the few topics where our institutional politicians who, who are in power, they agree on that 100%. The fact is, there may be elements of the left in America, like the AOC wing of the Democratic Party, who are technically in power and they oppose Israel. But they're the fringe of the party. And you know, a lot of the time, the criticisms that they get, like fielded at them, is a criticism of being anti-Semites. So there's a pattern here. And it's that if you want institutional power, you must be pro-Israel. And that's the key detail here. Because, I mean, recently I made a video about the corporate culture in terms of wokeism in the boardroom and as something that is kind of pushed and sold to the consumer, regardless of profit, like this, this pet project of the elite. Israel itself, as a state, I mean, that was almost a project of the 20th century elite. And this is history, this is Wikipedia, this is the definition of Zionism. And it really doesn't surprise me that a lot of these woke corporations and the, you know, the corporate culture and the hard line that they push, Disney, you know, Apple, all these companies, it's never a critique of Israel, ever. That would be a little bit of a self-own. And in a lot of ways, when you go onto IGN and you see the Palestinian flag on IGN, what you're seeing is, I think, it's an unintentional side effect of the woke ideological framework. The fact is, a lot of these ideas were, were crafted and honed a long time ago in the pre-World War II era, 20th century. I'm talking about Frankfurt School Marxism and ideas like the authoritarian personality and the foundation of things like modern gender theory. We want to undermine the West, and that's a good thing, and it's something that we should all get behind, is undermining Western values, Western tradition, those nations, you know? This is the primordial kind of, you know, origins of leftist ideology, okay? So that's just baked into the cake. But one thing I find interesting is that, you know, of course our elites embraced a lot of these ideas, 
But one of the things that they seem to find unacceptable is any of this deconstruction to be aimed and leveled at the state of Israel. I mean, that would be incredibly anti-Zionist to try and deconstruct and critique a nation state like Israel. It's very simple to do. All you have to do is just decide that the Jewish people are white. <laughs> like, it's like, it's a quantum decision, isn't it? The minute you are forced to make that observation, you're taking a side. And this is the kernel, the quantum kernel, that makes this topic so difficult to discuss. And now it's time for a thought experiment. Answer me this, are Jews white? And if they are, okay. And if they're not, what does that mean? Normies simply aren't really supposed to have an opinion about this topic. I mean, for all of the corporate woke propaganda that we have to eat, none of it programs the average NPC to, to have a strong opinion about these particular topics. You know, that, that question, it should just be something that's obvious, right? And a lot of people actually will, you'll ask them that question, and they'll be like, oh, of course they're white. And then you go, okay, so you, you, you think that they're white. Okay, well, doesn't that mean that you should be viewing the Israeli-Palestine conflict through that kind of woke intersectional lens? And if you did that, well, then surely there wouldn't be this, this confusion. It would simply be an open and shut condemnation. The Israeli state is bad. They are the bad actors in this because they are oppressing and tyrannizing the Palestinian people. You know, they are you know, utilizing things like military force and violence. It's like, isn't that the leftist definition of fascism? And by that metric, I mean, isn't the founding of Israel in 1948, isn't that just an example of colonialism? And there you go. I mean, that's the can of worms opened and no one, especially normies, nobody wants to go down that road. But on the flip side, what happens if, if you say, oh, okay, no, 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 Jews aren't white, actually. In fact, they were persecuted by white people, aka Germans. And then you could go, yeah, I mean, no, they're just another example of a race being subject to the control and oppression of, you know, the white race. Like, so you could, you could frame it like that. And in that case, I mean, hey, the far left have an anti-Semitism problem. Brie Larson unfollowed Gal Gadot on Twitter. Can you fucking believe this shit? It's outrageous. How are we tolerating this? How does the left expect to be taken seriously when their extreme side, you know, their far extremist side, which also includes Brie Larson for some reason, is just as, as bigoted and racist as the far right, you know? Just, just as, as anti-Semitic as the alt-right. Terrible. And look what we did to them. We banned them off of everything. I think we should ban the far left as well, okay? Because this vile anti-Semitism, it, it's, it's just unacceptable. It's unacceptable. So that's what we should do. But mm, maybe that will happen. In fact, I, I have a, a hunch that perhaps YouTube's very, very strict guidelines will perhaps affect some of the far left bread tuber types and also just, you know, whatever, the, the anti-Israel left. They will start to encounter some resistance, I think, from the institutional leftism that they themselves helped become this new status quo. They may start to experience some blowback from this. You know, they've, they've removed free speech for us and now they're going to have free speech removed for them if they insist on pursuing this anti-Israel narrative. You know, I mean, if it's, if it's as mainstream as IGN at this point, when, when, when mainstream video game journalists feel comfortable just being openly anti-Semitic, you know, the left has a problem. So you guys need to sort your shit out. I mean, hey, geez, you know, the, the, the mainstream right has purged all forms of anti-Semitism. So what's the beef, leftists, you know? Like, get your extremists under control because it's just embarrassing. It's a bad look. The optics are terrible. But there you have it. There's two sides of this coin. And like I said before, the reason why I, I describe it as a quantum conundrum is because there is a third way of looking at this. And that is, honestly, it's the best way to look at it, which is that these two scenarios are both true simultaneously, okay? Technically that there is this obfuscation that is just kind of inherent to this topic, which allows it to be exploited and to be mystified and to be kicked down the road. No definitive answers, nothing but chaos here, okay? And noise and interference. 
And, uh, you know, if you really, really want to learn and get kind of uh, your own opinion about this, it's a rabbit hole that could, it could drive you mad. And I, I have seen it drive some people to the brink of madness. So there's, there's like a Lovecraftian element to this as well. So I'm just saying. Perhaps that's it, it's that there is this noise surrounding the Israeli-Palestine conflict and it, it prevents you from really getting anywhere. And look at IGN, they, they look like complete assholes right now. Maybe, <laughs> depending on which quantum reality that you currently exist in. It's a matter of perception, it's a battle of narratives, neither of which seem to be 100% true. So, you know, welcome to 2021.